Hi, I'm Davier. The last time I talked about this real to real recorder, I mentioned that you can do a very unique kind of effect using this machine. I'm obviously talking about tape delay, better known as analog tape echo. Uh, this effect was uh, first developed in the early 40s using two real to real tape recorders with a single loop of tape. Sh by shortening the distance between the two machines, you could achieve different echo effects. Uh, very famously, this technique was uh, was used by Robert Fripp and Brian Eno, also known as Frippertronics. Over the years, engineers developed many devices specialized in producing this kind of effect. Uh, for example, an uh, early pioneer in uh, delay devices was Les Paul. In the 50s, tape echo devices became commercially available and many artists began to use them extensively. Very famously in the 60s, artists like Brian May, Jimmy Page and Sid Barrett and so on. A very well known device is the Roland Space Echo, widely used still today. Um, anyway, there are many other known example of devices like the famous Benson Ecorec that used uh, magnetic discs in instead of tape. Or the Vox Echomatic, uh, the Echoplex, the Wen Copycat, and etc. and etc. Uh, those were all analog devices, uh, but in the 80s, uh, digital delays became very popular. They were cheaper and offered more audio fidelity and effect control. They were compact as well, so the effect could be fitted in a pedal. Alright, so uh, after this long introduction and story, let's see our machine. So, as I said, the early effect was achieved by using two machines, uh, but not everybody knows that uh, it can actually be achieved by only one tape recorder like this. In this particular model is actually surprisingly simple. As I said the last time, this is the uh, record head and uh, this is the playback head. Uh, you see there is a physical gap between the two heads. So if you could have a loop of tape and by recording and playing back simultaneously, you could very well achieve a tape, tape echo effect. I have to mention that real to real tape recorders are not really supposed to do this kind of effect, but with a little trick, you can actually do it very simply. Uh, as a side note, uh, it was very common back in the days uh, to use this kind of buttons um, for the mode selection. Uh, those are latching button types, as you can see here. And once again, there, again, there is a very, very famous trick you can do with this type of buttons and with a very famous piece of audio gear. I'm talking about the legendary uh, 1176 uh, limited amplifier um, in fact by pressing all the latching buttons that define the compression ratio of that machine you could achieve a very distinctive sound, very punchy, compressed and quite distorted as well. Um, this trick became so popular that uh, still today uh, is actually replicated in digital emulators. So going back to our machine here, you can very simply push source and play simultaneously to create a loop of signal between the record and the playback head and achieve a distinctive and interesting tape echo effect. So uh, press source and play and they stay latched together and you achieve the effect. So enough talking, let's see this in action. So in order to achieve this effect, as I said, after setting your desired input and output, you have to press the two buttons and hit record. So I'm going to press the two source and play output select uh, simultaneously. They stay latched together and that's cool. And uh, select the uh, input here. So function select uh, input one. If I want to record uh, this channel here, I set the input volume, uh, whatever. And um, by varying the speed of the tape with both the speed, con the speed button, which is here, that selects between the uh, seven and a half inches per second to uh, the high speed, which is 15 inches per second, 
and the um, the pitch control uh, which is right here you can you have to pull it out to actually vary the speed um, you can actually vary the length of time between the repetitions uh, obviously uh, <laughs> obviously those are the only useful controls of the effect so it's actually quite limited so I prepared some audio examples to give it an idea of the effect and I used it with uh, guitar, keyboard and drums so let's take a listen Alright, so now I have it directly plugged into my synthesizer. It's a uh, Korg MS20 Mini, and there is no effect, only directly from it. <laughs> Just kidding. So, as you can hear, the effect is very interesting and fun to use. Now, I'm really curious to see the signal on the oscilloscope and take some measurements, see the repetition time, and whatever. So, let's go to lab. Alright, so we are in the lab and we have a uh, pulse generator, uh, we have our oscilloscope. So we are gonna actually hit record and see what's the signal here. So let's go. So here we go, we are in raw mode. As you can see on the first channel we have the dry signal directly from the pulse generator and the uh, second channel is the signal from the realtor recorder. So that's uh, it's now obviously uh, not running so let's uh, give it a go and uh, see what we get there we go so as you can see there are a few repetitions and uh, measure the time for each repetition as you can see there is a beautiful beautiful signal alright so as you can see here on the cursors we have a delta of approximately 76 milliseconds alright so let's have a look at a different speed so that was uh, high speed now we're gonna go at uh, the low speed setting 
we have a little bit of feedback. So we have a signal. It's usable, so let's stop it. So this time we have a delta of approximately 160 um, milliseconds. So it's much wider, the delay. And it is perfectly consistent uh, all over here. All right, so that was uh, quite interesting. So hope you enjoyed this little uh, video on the little trick you can do uh, with uh, this kind of uh, realtor recorder. So hopefully it has been useful or interesting nonetheless. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.